Okay, now I'd like to talk about a couple of uh, somewhat more advanced topics in significant figures calculations. One is uh, when we're taking logarithms, how do we deal with significant figures? And the other is how we deal with significant figures when we are working with complex calculations using combined operations. So, first of all, when taking logarithms, you may recall this word mantissa that you learned back when you learned about logarithms. The mantissa is the part of the number to the right of the decimal point in a logarithm. So it's what comes after the decimal, all those digits that come after the decimal. And the rule generally for logarithms is that if you were asked to take the logarithm of a number, that you will look at how many sig figs are in that number, in this case three, and then when you put it in, into your calculator to take the log of that number, you will retain in the mantissa of your answer as many sig figs as there are in the number of which you are taking the logarithm. So I have three sig figs here, and when I get my answer, I want there to be three sig figs after the decimal. So if I take this number 2.51 and I take the logarithm of that, the calculator gives me an answer of 0 0.3996737281. And again, the rule says that I want to retain in the mantissa of this number, that's after the decimal, as many sig figs as there were in the original number. Three sig figs in the original number. I want to keep one, two, three sig figs after the decimal. So because this number following that one, the fourth number is a six, that will round that nine up to a zero, that one up to a zero, and that one up to a four. So the scientifically significant answer, 0 0.400. Three sig figs in the original number, three sig figs in the mantissa of the answer. And that's the rule for taking logarithms and using sig figs. Now, the next rule I want to talk about, or the next process I'd like to talk about, is how to deal with sig figs when we have combined operations. So combined operations, generally you're going to use your order of operations rule. Parentheses, followed by multiplication division, followed by addition subtraction. So we're going to apply our sig figs rules at each stage. Now doing this could risk introducing some rounding errors. So we want to be very careful about uh, observing what digits we are getting rid of as we go through these steps so that our final answer makes scientific sense. Now let's take an example here and I'm going to deal with what's in the parentheses first. And if I put these numbers 2.5450 times 10.4971. If I plug those into my calculator, I get the answer 26.7151195 from just what's in the parentheses. This is a multiplication. So remember, I'm going to use the multiplication division rule for sig figs. The fewest number of sig figs of either of these two numbers is going to tell me how many sig figs I should have in my answer. Five sig figs here, six sig figs here. So the answer after this stage, the subtotal so far, can only have five sig figs. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to get rid of all the rest of that. So that is the result from this parenthetical calculation. 
Now I have this second step. The second in my order of operations is to subtract 52.165. Now remember the rule for addition and subtraction. The rule for addition of subtraction is not interested in how many sig figs you have. It's just interested in where the last sig fig shows up in your least precise number. Both of these numbers are precise out to the three places past the decimal. So my answer is going to be reported to three places past the decimal. So if I plug this into my calculator, 26.715 minus 52.165 equals. I get the answer 25.45. That's what my calculator tells me. But remember, my sig figs rules say I'm supposed to be able to report out to three places past the decimal here. So I have to manually go back in and reinsert the zero that my calculator dropped. So therefore, oh, and this is a negative number, of course. Therefore, that is the scientifically significant answer. Now, just to kind of check, to see if I have introduced any rounding errors here, I'm going to take a look real quick at the digits that I got rid of up here. And just in my mind, I'm going to consider, had I left them in, what would have been the answer that I've gotten down here? Well, I don't have to just rely on my mind here. I'm going to plug it into my calculator. 715-1195 minus 52.165 equals, and that would have given me negative 25.4498805 and if I wanted to round that up to three places past the decimal that would be my last sig fig that eight would round that up to a zero and that would round up to a five 25.45 zero negative and that would have been the answer that I would have received had I not rounded as I went. So I can compare that to the answer that I got. And that just is a test to see, no, I did not introduce any rounding errors by doing this step-by-step -step approach and applying my sig figs rules after each step in my combined operations. And there you go. A couple of a little bit more advanced examples of how to deal with significant figures.